united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Well, good morning and welcome to this beautiful program, United with Christ. My name is uh, Timothy Perea, pastor of New Life Faith Center. And today we have some exciting uh, news and message. And, and beyond that, we have the opportunity to preach the word of God, the, the gospel that transforms lives. And I want to welcome you to this program. And I'm going to invite you to invite someone uh, why don't you encourage someone to come and say, you know what, Pastor Tim is online and today he's got a, a special word for me and uh, uh, and uh, invite your friend and your and your relatives. Brothers, God bless each and every one of you. Today is a beautiful day that God has made. So we're going to jump right into it. But before I, I, I go into the message, uh, I do want to. Um, you know, advise and convey the following. Uh, we're having the National Day of Prayer on the 4th of May at the Rock Faith Center. Uh, we're going to have from 9 a.m. all the way to 9 p.m. intercessory prayers. And we want to thank those who are part of the committee that have not only established the, the day, the time, and who's going to host it, but have this initiative to, to pray for our beloved nation, a nation that has given us freedom, given us hope, given us this uh, uh, basic value that we have. Because keep in mind that this nation uh, was founded, or is founded, I'm so sorry, on Judeo-Christian principles and values. So I want to thank, first of all, uh, those who are promoting the event, the committee that's done a great and excellent job in, in actually, you know, providing the time and the place. And you might be asking yourself, what is it, Pastor Tim, I want to attend? Well, let me let me just give you some, some information. So it's going to be May the 4th, uh, the, the first Thursday of uh, the, the beautiful month of May. Uh, it's going to be hosted at the Rock Faith Center. It's 11201 Armor Lane. Uh, pastor Eric Holbeck is the lead pastor, senior pastor there at that church. And we're going to have it from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's where we're going to have a collective, uh, uh, you know, participation of our uh, fellow pastors within El Paso, and we would like to see you there. Uh, Pastor, if you're hearing me, we would like to see you there. And uh, if you need further information or anything within that, you can go to National Day of Prayer and they'll have all that information for you. So keep in mind, National Day of Prayer, May the 4th, uh, from 7 to 9 at the Rock Faith Center. And we'll be there uh, interceding from 9 a.m. all the way to 9 p.m. We have different uh, blocks who are going to be praying throughout the day. And the main event, for lack of a better word, is going to be from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And we would love to see you there. Also, I'm opening up the lines. If you have a prayer or need, or you just want to say, you know what, brother, I need more information, give us a call here at the at the station here at 915-532-8518. Once again, it's 915-532-8518. You'll also see it um, Displayed there uh, in front of your TV, and uh, well, let's jump into the prayer. I mean, let's let's go into and ask the Lord. You know what, God, we want to unite the body as always. That's your desire. And as uh, a person said once, that once the body is united, then the body can be ignited for Christ. So, so thank you for giving me this opportunity. Well, since we're talking about the subject of prayer, uh, I would like to uh, open up this particular um, uh, spot. Of, of not only speaking about prayer, uh, but also, uh, you know, encouraging to be constant in prayer. Paul said to the Thessalonian, uh, the church, he said, you know what? Pray without ceasing. The Bible is very clear when it mentions ceasing as being constant without fail or do not falter and what you're praying for. So I'm going to ask you, well, get, let's get ready. Let's jump into the word of God. Let's see what God has for us today. And uh, before I continue, though, I do want to share a story uh, about the need that we have here uh, as far as prayer for our nation. You know, there was one says that there was a pilot that was flying a plane uh, overseas 
and he started having difficulty or malfunction with the, with this airplane, and he he said, "Mayday, Mayday!" He called the tower, "Mayday! This is pilot so and forth. This is the air flight uh, so and forth. I'm at uh, 400 miles before I reach land, and I'm right now I'm at 800 feet, 800 feet above water, and and I need assistance. And the pilot is saying to, to the tower, "I need your assistance." And then the tower responded, "Pilot, pilot." our Father, which are in heaven. Some of the times we see this is that it's, it's a sense of urgency of why we need not only to gather and, and pray for this wonderful nation, which is in dire need, but we also need the time and the moment as a church to step up to the plate. You know what? Many people say, you know what? The problem is at the White House. The house, that, that they have to get things in order. But sometimes we have to consider and go back. You know what? The problem is maybe at the White House, yes. But it's more in the house of God. Where me and you come every Sunday or during the week. Where we gather and we sing and sing praises to the Lord. Sometimes God wants us to be on our knees so we can pray. So, so basically uh, throughout this particular message, I want to encourage I want to, uh, you know, uh, inculcate in you that desire to, to serve the Lord and look for him, not be reactive, but be proactive in his kingdom. And I want to share a scripture with you uh, in the book of Acts chapter 12. And, and the reason I'm, I'm leading to that particular uh, scripture is because I want you to see a couple of principles that were laid out in the early church, how they were not only praying, but they were reacted to prayer because in Acts chapter 12, they suddenly realized in the time of persecution where they saw uh, the, James, the brother of John, you know what, get in prison, but then he got uh, what we consider he was one of the martyrs within that time frame. And how in Acts chapter 12, we're going to see an example in the word of God. Why is it important to continue on in prayer? And then uh, not only that, believe that he will do his magnificent and miraculous action when the prayer of a fervent just will prevail much. Look what it says, and, and I want to take you there in Acts chapter 12. And I want you to uh, look at this story where uh, the, the Bible says that the, the church was reactive. Okay, now I want to encourage you, you know, we can't be reactive, we got to be proactive. And look what verse 1 says Now, by the time of Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. He says, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Verse 3 says, and because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to take Peter into prison. Now, keep in mind, nowadays we're more reactive than proactive because we're, we live in a comfort zone. We live in a, in a nation of freedom, uh, land of the free, home of the brave, as that song says. And, and, and we become reactive to, to the uh, prayer. But today I'm encouraging you, you know what? Let's stand up as a church and let's be proactive. Because look what happens when we're reactive to it. Once they apprehended Peter and they took him to jail, the, the word of God says in verses 4, and when he had apprehended him and he put him in prison, delivered him to the four quaternions of soldiers to keep him uh, intended after uh, what we consider uh, Easter to bring him forward to the people. And verses 5 says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made, note this, without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now, I want you to notice that the people of God, when we come together uh, as a body, and we, we lay out our differences and we say, you know what, today we're going to separate whatever issues we have, underlying issues, I say. Uh, and, and we gather with the mindset, with the mind of Christ. And not only are we united in, in mind and spirit, but we have our focus point. Uh, we, the power is a secret weapon for the church. Now, this nation, as you see, 
It's a nation that has been not only belligerent, but in denial of who God is. And because of that, we have fatherless homes. It, 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 there's a stat out there that says that the suicide within our young people are, are between the, the 70 to the 75% in their fatherless homes. It is once said that people who are behind bars or in prison, they have fatherless homes. Uh, we've seen an increment where uh, American values have, down, have, have not only went down to twos, but have lost consistency throughout. We have forgotten who God is. Is. We have forgotten where we came from as a nation. It's, it's said that everything that has to do with abortion and, 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 and the LGBTQ agenda and, and all these other community groups that are, are being effective and are destroying the fabric society of America have, have prevailed because the church has not been proactive. Now, one, one uh, speaker said that a family can live without a nation, but the nations cannot live without families. God wants to do something in your lives. And that's where the focal point of, of gathering, uh, you know, the churches within El Paso is not only to intercede for the nation and pray for our government leaders, but it's also to promote within the secret weapon that we have as a church. Me and you have a weapon, the spiritual uh, warfare that we deal with. We have to deal with it in an effective way. And what happened in the time uh, of, of our beloved uh, brothers in, in the book of Acts is that they realized the secret power. Now, I want you to notice one thing, and, and you probably know the story. Once they started interceding uh, for, for their leader, in this case scenario, Peter, and they realized that they lost John, uh, James, I'm so sorry, due to his, his commitment and testimony to, 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 to the, uh, the kingdom. Look what verse 6 says. And when Herod, which is an, they, that, that the government leader, would have brought him forth the same night, I, I want you to notice, Peter was sleeping. <laughs> this guy was sleeping. Between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. This guy was guarded. Everybody was with the church. What's going on? Herod was afraid because he realized that the church had not only potential, but had the power in Christ. When... You see this, there is this favorite, and, and, and I love these particular sayings that are out there. So there's a saying out there that says, it says, when Satan, <laughs> Satan sees, when Satan trembles, it's when he sees the weakest saint in his knees. The power of God is invested in the church. Me and you not only have the responsibility of having an intimacy with God, but we have the dire need of being intercessors. So we have to intercede why things are going on. Now, we have a nation that is not only divided, we also have a government that wants to take over. And we have here in the city of El Paso, we have this increment crime and violence within teenagers. We have the juvenile detention uh, that is not only full of kids, but they don't know what to do anymore. They, they want to treat mental health and they've been doing a, an okay job in that area. And then we have our city leaders that have to gather just to even discuss the subject about public safety. But let me tell you this, the church, it's time for me and you to rise. Say with me, brother, I am going to be proactive instead of being reactive. Well, guess what happens when we apply God's principles in prayer, especially when we gather together under one name. Look what happened in verse 7. Peter was sleeping. The church was interceding. And guess what happens in verse 7? And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. And a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. <laughs> Not only 
that the angel had to perturb Paul, uh, Peter, I'm so sorry. Not only did he have to wake him up, but Peter was in his, in his sleep mode. Maybe he was in his third or fourth uh, stage of, of, of sleeping. And, 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 and you have this angel <laughs> from God coming to wake him up. Now, this shows us a principle that the intention of prayer is not for us to govern God and for him to oblige to my needs. No, the power of prayer, and I want you to note this down, is to change me. It's not to change God's mind, but it is to change my mind. This is where God aligns his will in my life. So the first principle I want to share with you today is I have to align my will to his will. How? Through an effectual prayer, a meaningful prayer, an intercessory prayer. And when you see that, you'll see the power of God transforms lives. I mean, I've been a walking testimony. I've seen miracles beyond miracles. I've seen God, uh, you know, in my own family, my wife, my kids, how God's not only mercy, but his, his power has manifested. That same power is what God has invested in the church. And I am motivating you, my beloved brother and sister, my brother in Christ, pastor. If you're hearing me for the first time, uh, constant prayer means that you have to pray without seeing. It doesn't mean I'm only going to pray once and expect God to do miracles. No. What is Acts chapter 12 verse 5 says? And the church was gathered and was praying without ceasing. That particular message was something that was brought to the heart of God. And that aligned the church at that moment with his will. Now, when they saw this, I want you to notice one thing. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, gird thyself, bind thy sandals. <laughs> he was very rested, Peter. And so he did. And he said unto thee, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And when they, and, and when they were actually at the outside, he thought he saw a vision. But verse 10 says, but when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate. They lead it unto the city, which opened up to them in, in of his own accord and they went out and they passed through the cities prayer constant prayer delivers god's power and then by that at that moment god's going to direct our path as a church here in el paso i exhort thee i i motivate you you say you know what on may the 4th i'm going to be there present because why we've seen day in and day out here in El Paso, uh, the, the city crime has gone up. Uh, we've seen uh, certain things that are going about. The city leaders are asking for the church for help. And now it's time for us to respond. What's going to equip the church? We have to have a unity. We cannot, a church is not enough for the city. We have to come together so that that city can see a united church and they can come to the knees of Christ and say, you know what? Without thee, I cannot do anything. Well, guess what happens? When, when this happens in, in, in the book of, of Acts, we see that in verse 13, I want you to notice something. <laughs> when Rhoda came out to meet Peter, verse 14 says, and when she used Peter's voice, she opened up the gate for gladness, ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto him, thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was, it was him. They said, no, it's this angel. It's a spirit. But no, Peter continued on knocking and said, you know what? God has answered your prayer. <laughs> it, it shocks us to believe that uh, when we pray and then God answers, we're like, okay, <laughs> is it really him? Well, let me tell you something. It is really him. And that's why when we come to this National Day of Prayer, which was signed by Reagan, and, and now it's, a, it's an uh, annual event where the whole nation, uh, 50 states, uh, those who uh, honor and, and, and understand that it is not only a need, it's a requirement for us to pray for our nation, it, it, they, they see the focal point. That's why I, I, I praise God that we have this opportunity to, to come into one place uh, El Paso, 
and, and, and claim and shout to the Lord and ask him, God, uh, we're interceding for our president, for the vice president. God, we want you to bless each state in, in, in here within, within the a beautiful uh, state of America. We want you to bless our local government in El Paso. We want you to bless the state of Texas. And then you, and you mentioned names, governor here, lieutenant governor there, mayor here, county judge there. And you began to intercede. God will and can move upon this beautiful nation that we live in. Acts chapter 12 is, is an answer to a prayer where when Jesus said where there are two or three that come to one accord and they ask to the Father, whatever they have in their hearts according to his will, he will grant it. And, and I want to I wanna emphasize on that because an effectual fervent prayer of the just, the righteous, prevail at month. Much, And that's the whole theme about this National Day of Prayer, where we as a church, as a body, are going to come together, intercede, fellowship. Take it when, for example, you as a dad or a mom, uh, invite your kids to come over. <laughs> and, and, and the mom gets prepared, you know what, I'm going to... I'm going to prepare this meal for them. The dad gets red. He starts cleaning here and there. And, 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 they, and they prepare because the, the meditation says, you know what? I'm going to gather my family together. Well, guess what? May the 4th is that opportunity. So I, I continue on inviting you. Also, if you have prayer, uh, if you have a need, you can give us a call at 915-532-8518. And we'll be here to pray for your needs. So beyond that, Coming to this close, as we see a nation that is crumbling, you know, you have crippling addictions day in and day out. You have families that are disintegrating. You have this gender identity crisis among schools. We have, uh, you know, mass shootings every week, it seems like it's something that's out there. We also have within our internal uh, 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 you know, churches, a lot of families that, that are not desiring to, to continue on living a holy life. We just celebrated, you know, Easter and all that. And, and one of the things that I've noticed uh, uh, within, within that celebration is that our focus is not in Christ. We have to be focused on Christ, on alert. The Word of God says that we have to be on standby. Be sober and vigilant, be on standby. And the only way that we can be on standby is if me and you utilize that secret weapon that God has provided for the church. Matthew chapter 6 says that the disciples were hungry. They even asked God uh, through Jesus Christ, they said, the Son of God, they said, you know what, teach us how to pray. And, and that's where we have to go back because if we read, for example, uh, the prophet, we want a revival. He says, the prophet Habakkuk, I want a revival, he says. I want you to revive. Well, guess what? The word revival means to restore, to place in that condition where we give us back to that original state of mind. And, and the only way we can intercede and only we can, we can pray and make it effectual and make it with, with this meaningful prayer is when we come united, when we come under that one umbrella and say, you know what? We're going to take all these differences. We're going to take all these particular items of the agenda. We have to unite as a body and we have to come into one accord. That's what the word of God says in Acts chapter 1. When Jesus instructed his disciples, you know what, wait. Wait until you guys are invested, filled with my power. And then the word of God continues on saying that 120, they met in the upper room and they were under one accord. And they were able to see God, his power descend upon them. I believe that God has a special date. And, and I want you to keep that date, May the 4th, this year at the Rock Face Center, that God has something prepared for this city, beautiful city of ours, of El Paso. 
And not only the city of El Paso, the state of Texas. And not only the state of Texas, but beyond all the states. And not only in the White House, but in the house of God. And, and I want to lead and finalize with the prayer. Uh, but before, before I make this prayer, look what this beautiful hymn says about God bless America. It says, God bless America, land that I love. Stand behind her, uh, beside her, I'm sorry, and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies, to the oceans while the foam. God bless America, my home, sweet Home, God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. We are in a need of seeing God's power here in this beautiful city of El Paso. We want to get this station channel 38 behind it because when the move and the power of God we want everybody to be involved for those who have been not only proclaiming the gospel but those who have been withstanding throughout this time standing firm against the wiles of the devil we want to encourage you to continue on with us so keep in mind May the 4th this year from 7 to 9 is the main event at the Rock Faith Center. And then we're going to be interceding from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. all day that day for God to do something wonderful in this nation. So I'm going to extend my hand. I'm going to find out why we pray. God, that you bless this nation, that you bless the church, that you can wake us up so we can rise up and shine for your glory. We ask in your wonderful and beautiful name, Jesus Christ. I was with you guys, Timothy Perea. God bless you. United with Christ.